Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Organic Chemistry module. This is video 25 and we're going to be looking at properties and bonding. In this one we're going to look specifically at three of our functional groups that we haven't looked at in a lot of detail, the carboxylic acids, the amines and the amides, and look at some of the um, links between each of these groups in terms of inter and intramolecular bonding and also how that can affect the properties within and between these series. So once again, when we're doing these comparisons, it's probably most easy if we look at um, setting up tables, comparison tables. Now, obviously, I'm trying to give you a um, overview here just to give you a basic idea of some of the key things that are important, but you can expand these tables and obviously there's going to be some redundancy built into a table like this that you can fill up with various other things. So I'll put a few things in this table and hopefully you'll be able to expand on this to give you a bit more uh, depth to your responses. But we need to look at properties of each of these groups and also to see if we can find links between them in terms of uh, the intra and intermolecular bonding. So I guess the first thing we need to do is to look at each of these groups individually. So if I take these cells that are in the um, central diagonal of this particular table, then it gives me a chance to um, focus on each individual one. So firstly, of the three, the carboxylic acids have the highest polarity in terms of the molecules. Amines have the lowest polarity in terms of their molecules, and the amides are probably somewhere in the middle. They have moderate polarity. In terms of solubility, now we know that solubility is about um, the interaction of like dissolving like, so therefore these will be soluble in polar solvents and that solubility will decrease with um, chain length. And if I put a little ditto mark in each of these then that same thing applies. The solubility is probably slightly higher in the more polar molecules but the difference isn't too great and certainly the trend uh, is the same as we increase that chain length with hydrocarbon change you're getting an increase in the number of dispersion forces and so that's going to be less likely to be able to remain solvent in polar solvents although it can increase its solubility in non-polar solvents. Um, the other thing that may be useful to look at certainly in terms of chemical properties for the carboxylic acids is that they can be reduced um, to an aldehyde or an alkanal and perhaps even further on to a primary alcohol. The amines uh, cannot be reduced, but the amides can also be reduced to form amines. That means we can remove the oxygen and, um, and that would leave us with an amine group. So there's a couple of reactions that are important. Um, or reactive properties that are important for each of these individual groups um, and also something around their polarity. If we have a look at a comparison in terms of the structures between the amines and the carboxylic acid, so for the amines we're looking at carbon bonded to a nitrogen. Now obviously there will be other things perhaps bonded off these but that's our key functional group, the carbon bonded to the nitrogen. The carboxylic acid of course is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and to a hydroxyl group and then to something else as well. There are two unbonded electrons here and of course there's a two pairs of unbonded electrons around the oxygens and I haven't shown those bonds separately for the oxygen and the hydrogen but you should obviously put those in as well and certainly they help you in your explanations. The presence of these and the interaction between these and hydrogens, for example, is what creates the dipole-dipole interactions and specifically hydrogen bonds between each of these groups. So that's important for things like melting point and boiling point, 
but it also is important for things like miscibility and whether or not these substances are going to mix with one another. The difference between the amides and the carboxylic acids is that um, the hydroxyl group has been substituted with that nitrogen um, and obviously other things are happening. Um, but just to give us a little bit of a general idea of focusing in on these functional groups. And of course the difference between the amide and the amine is just that lack of um, double bonded oxygen on the amine. So this is the amine and this is the amide. So it's looking at the functional groups and how each of these are bonded together, the, the polarity that's created within the covalent bonds that are present, any lone pairs of electrons that are also going to be potentially interacting between groups, um, that's very important in terms of how we're going to compare each of these. So if we perhaps look now at um, comparing between these groups, we might find um, some other things that, that will make a little more sense to us. One of the most important things about the carboxylic acid and the amine groups is this is a, an example of a weak acid plus weak base. So when we put these two together, we do actually end up with a, a chemical interaction between them. In fact, the bond will f that forms between them is called a peptide bond. Those of you who study biology would be familiar with that. Amino acids have an amine functional group at one end of the molecule and an acid functional group at the other end of the molecule and the interaction between these is also going to release a water molecule which is what we would expect from a, an acid base reaction. OH group from the acid has linked in with one of the uh, so from here and here, for example, so the nitrogen moving across. And what we actually end up with is that amide-looking um, functional group in the center. And that's where a peptide bond would form. The other thing about each of these is that we would expect much higher boiling points, higher MP, BP, for the, for the acids. The higher polarity of the carboxylic acids in comparison to the amines means that the um, melting and boiling points for the acids, or at least for corresponding acids, is going to be much higher for the, for the acids than they are for the amines. And partly this is due to the fact that the polarity that's created between the carbon and the oxygen is much greater than that created between the carbon and the nitrogen. And hence that also flows on to the, to the differences in the polarity created between oxygen and hydrogen and nitrogen and hydrogen. The dipole-dipole interactions will primarily be um, hydrogen bonding that's occurring between these molecules, but still the strength of the bond between the amine group, uh, the amine molecules, and in comparison to those between the carboxylic acid molecules, are certainly not going to be as strong, and therefore that explains the lower boiling point and melting point for the amines. If we look at the amides, the amides are more of a neutral substance, so they don't interact in the same sort of way with carboxylic acids as the amine group does. And in fact, that presence of the double bonded oxygen for the amine plus the nitrogen means that you're actually ending up with some quite high melting and boiling points for our amides in comparison to the acids. So high amount of months for amides compared with the acids. So we actually find the amides have an even greater um, melting and boiling points. The main reason of course is the stronger hydrogen bonding that is occurring between the amide molecules and basically that's, that's really uh, as much about opportunities as it is the actual individual strength. So um, this is one of the important things that we need to look at in terms of how these molecules are structured. And in fact, the way that the molecules are distributed gives us a little bit of an idea about why this might be the case. So this is one of the reasons why we looked at molecular shape earlier in this module, to give us a sense of how those 
um, atoms distributed around a central carbon can actually contribute to things like its polarity. If we're comparing the amines and the amides, well, of course, the amines have a much lower uh, melting point and boiling point than the corresponding amides. And again, that's directly uh, linked to that double bonded oxygen. That um, polarity that's created between the carbon and the double bonded oxygen, which is present in an amide, but which is absent in an amine, is one of the things that's going to make some significant difference between them. Again, the fact that the amine has some slight um, basic qualities, um, but the amide has uh, more of a neutral, it doesn't kind of do one thing or the other, means that they don't have the same level of interaction in terms of weak acid, weak base that we saw when we were looking at the interaction between amines and carboxylic acids. This is a very quick uh, rush through each of these three groups and how you might look at comparing the three groups to one another and also identifying some of the key features about each of these groups. Some diagrams, particularly when you're explaining uh, physical properties, can be really helpful in order to identify exactly what's going on in terms of the distribution of charge, any lone pairs, any interaction between the molecules that include things like hydrogen bonds and or dispersion forces or even dipole-dipole interactions. So um, to see if you can expand on this table a little bit, add a bit more information so that you can fill out your understanding of the difference um, in bonding uh, within and between these three important organic groups. And thanks for watching.